Alex Clemson just finished year two out here in Corvallis. Alex, how much different? <laughs> how much different is the West Coast from the East Coast, man? It's different. It's um, it's different. People are um, different. Uh, the lifestyles are a little different. The pace of life's a little different. Uh, I had a hard time at first adjusting, but uh, you know, Jim and Troy and Kevin and Trav and you know, Nick, now we got Izzy out here. I mean, everybody's so friendly and helpful and uh, has made the transition as easy as possible for me, being so far from my family and everything. Uh, it's been uh, it's been a great experience for me thus far, and uh, I'm excited about the Beavers and what we're going to be capable of doing in the next uh, couple of years. So um, it's different, but it's been a good different. You know, I'm 26 and young and single, and uh, uh, this was about the best time I could have done it in my life to go experience an entire new uh, world. All right, you guys, you're an Edinburgh guy. What's it like going from Edinburgh, which is, I think, one Division Two football? Yeah, Division Two in every sport. And division, but wrestling. Exactly. Uh, what's it like going from kind of that smaller Pennsylvania school, uh, a PSAC school, to a PAC school, man, like a big time, a Nike school, a big time football school? What's what's that like? Well, I mean, every I think every place has its uh, advantages. You know, Edinburgh is a great place. Um, I love my time there, but Oregon State is, uh, I mean, just the resources we have available to us, the facilities. Um, the Nike contract, uh, whether it's academic services or strength and conditioning, or you know the staff that we're able to uh, to, to keep around, uh, Oregon State's got it going on. So uh, it's been nice. I mean, Edinburgh's a, a nice community. It's a great school, rich tradition, hardworking people. Um, heck of a program. Tim Flynn is you know got it going, uh, but. I think big things are going to happen here, and a lot of it has to do with um, the ability that Oregon State has to uh, have the resources. And they're, you know, we're not going to win because we've got the most money, but we have the ability to attract you know good talent and great people. I mean, you don't get Jim Zaleski and Troy Steiner, and Kevin Roberts and Travis Pasco and Nick Simmons and myself and Israel to move out here. Sorry, guys, I'm just going to mute this. <laughs> and uh, you know. So that's like probably the biggest thing is just having the resources available to be able to ensure that success can happen. I mean, not every place has the ability to have that success. I mean, you're looking at a lot of programs right now that unfortunately are struggling, maybe not because there's not good people there, but because they don't have the ability to, to truly help themselves. And I, I hope that, you know, wrestling survives and continues to thrive and, uh, you know, people continue to back our sport and support it so that, you know, teams like the Edinburgh's out there and the outliers, if you will, um, will be able to continue to have success because those programs are just as important as any other program out there. What would you compare? You've been to all diff three different regions of the country. Yeah. Okay, you've been dead center in Missouri, where you where you uh, how many times state champ? Three, three, three times state champ, Missouri. Uh, then you go to you know the hotbed of wrestling, you know Western Pennsylvania. The uh, Northeast Ohio, Western Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania area. Okay, they got the most Division One colleges there, and you saw true wrestling country there in Pennsylvania. Then you come out here to the West Coast. You know, how do those three different areas, you know, compare? Oh, uh, it's you know, it's different. The Midwest is, uh, you know, you have your, you know, your big players, your major players, where you know, with Iowa and Oklahoma, and you know, Illinois is great, and Brian Smith and Missouri's done a tremendous job getting that program going. I mean, they're a powerhouse, so the Midwest is like so, uh, you have your like traditional schools, I guess, and then the East Coast is, I mean, it's like every night you wrestle somebody that is dangerous, you know, whether, you know, they have, you know, a couple good guys in their lineup or their kids that have just the ability to score from a lot of different positions, um, and you don't have to drive eight hours for a duel or take a plane for a duel. I mean, you hop on a bus and you, you travel three hours down the road and you can hit three different schools. And so it's nice budget-wise and, and traveling-wise as a student athlete. And then out here, you know, our, with what's happened with, you know, unfortunately at the University of Oregon and uh, also Portland State now, um, we have to travel a little bit for duels and the spaces are a little more open and vast. And, uh, you know, that's a four 
unfortunate. I'd like to see some things happen differently out here and get reversed. Uh, the sport needs it. The region needs it. Wrestling out here at the high school level is pretty good. I mean, Washington's high school wrestling is phenomenal. Uh, Idaho's doing a good job. Montana, Oregon, California. I mean, geez. Uh, That's the toughest state to win. Yeah, I mean, well, I'm, yeah, maybe. I mean, just number-wise. Number-wise, at least. For sure. Uh, that, I mean, if you're a state champ in California, you're probably as good as anybody out there. And, uh, um, it's unfortunate to see, you know, programs dwindling. And it's unfortunate anywhere, you know. It's, it's also happening in the Midwest and the East Coast. And I just don't understand. You have wrestling growing at every level except, you know, college. So we're, we're having more and more kids wrestle at the younger level, whether it's youth or middle school or high school, than ever before. We have, we have fewer and fewer collegiate programs. And uh, I guess maybe you're seeing a really high level of wrestling because all the good best kids are, you know, getting grouped together and seeing each other and stuff. So it's good for the sport maybe in that sense, but it's really not good for the sport in the fact that opportunities are limited and guys are, you know, maybe not considering college wrestling or uh, as heavily as they would or maybe they're looking at other sports or maybe they're just going to school or they feel that they don't want to go so far away. It's just the opportunity should be there for young men to compete. And uh, our sport, our country needs our sport. The values that you learn and the things you are taught is just, you can't learn that in any classroom or from any uh, other thing in life. I, I truly believe that. I mean, I do well in school and getting my master's degree and the things that I've learned in the sport of wrestling will never be matched. Do you, do you think that, uh, you know, you uh, you were competing, you went to a couple of tournaments. Do you think you're going to continue to uh, pursue competition? Or, you know, obviously you're a very business-minded person. You've got two degrees from Edinburgh. You're getting a third a graduate degree from here. Will you stay in the more business end of it, or are you going to stay competing? If I had if I had my way, I'd stay in college coaching. I mean, when I came out here, it was like a two-sided deal. I could go to school so I could get my MBA, and I could learn, you know, the college coaching ranks from, you know, maybe one of the best coaches that's ever coached, Jim Zaleski. And, uh, it's been an awesome experience through seeing wrestling through his perspective and Troy's perspective. And, I've just I've learned a lot in my last you know 24 months now, and uh, um, I know this is what I want to do. It's just I mean the opportunities are limited, and I understand that there are several people that are highly qualified that aren't even in coaching right now that are you know doing things in the business world. So um, that's me. You know the NBA I guess is going to be my backup plan, and uh, if I have it my way, I'll I'll continue to coach, and uh, um, hopefully there's programs available. And, for me to, you know, pursue that career and for, you know, kids out there to, to continue to learn and grow in our sport. All right, what's the most interesting, per most personal, interesting thing you can think of about Alex Clemson? That you want people to know, at least. Um, I think there's two sides to Alex Clemson. There's a side that the general public sees, you know, the people that are my, probably like acquaintances or you know, that I meet in passing. And then there's a side that my best friends and family see that is a lot uh, more open and caring and warm and compassionate. Um, people always say that, that, my closest friends always say that they wish that more people saw that side of me. And, uh, people in passing don't see that? Yeah, I think I probably come off a little rough sometimes. A little, little brash? A little brash. I think being around Jimmy and Troy have like really helped that. I think I've calmed a little bit and maybe humbled a little bit. So my experience here has been not just good for my wrestling, but for my personal life as well. So hopefully maybe uh, I continue to grow and people, more people see like the, the, uh, the softer side of Alex.